How's everyone doing today? Good. Good. Yep. Oh, yeah. I was waiting for this. Now we can start. Uh, yeah, Coach, um, what are some of the issues on a quick turnaround of the team you just played uh, for a special teams unit? I don't necessarily say it's any issues. It's actually um, there's some fam familiarity when it comes to who we're playing it with uh, playing Carolina and playing Coach, uh, Coach Tabor and his special teams. Also, too, being able to co coach against Coach Tabor, which he does an incredible job with their special teams unit. You can even date back to when he was with Cleveland to my years coaching against him while I was with Detroit and he was in Chicago. Those guys are physical. They play fast. They do a good job of flipping the field when the return game. You can look at Raheem Blackshear. He does one of the top returners in the league, had a 66-yarder last week versus Cincinnati, and they're creating a spark for their offense when it comes to creating and controlling field position. So it's a great challenge for us this week when it goes to, when we talk about their coverage units, their return units. Um, so I think the challenge is more so their personnel and what we're going against and the weapons that they have on special teams. But it, it kind of helps us that we did play them a week and a half ago. And where do you feel your units are, you know, halfway through the season and uh, some areas where they could, you know, keep getting going up for you? I truly believe we can improve in every single phase of the game. Dating back to the times before, we're guaranteed a kickoff and a kickoff return. So continue to be in the present when it comes to whatever situations we're in, being able to execute better with all 11 guys doing their job and being able to flip the field when it comes to certain situations, whether it's coverage game or, you know, we talk about leaving meat on the bone in the return game. So we have some opportunities. Last time we played Carolina, we had two penalties on the kickoff return, which hurt us in field position. So that's our challenge this week is do a better job playing the game penalty free to help our offense with better field position. Thanks for uh, Avery was kick turnaround Sunday. And how much of that was just Corgero getting back up to speed versus what you guys are maybe planning to do going forward? It's kind of a combination of both. You know, it's first CP's first game back. Um, we would love to have him as a kickoff returner. But Avery does a great job as well as a returner as well when it comes to decision making and getting vertical with the football. And as you can see, week in and week out, we're not really getting a lot of opportunities when it comes to that, that phase of the game. Um, but we're going to put the best 11 guys out there. And it's all based on situations, whether, whether it's their volume on offense or situationally when it comes to the return game and type of kicks that we're getting based on conditions and the type of kicker we're going against. Obviously, like you said, I haven't been getting a lot of opportunity. How much is that that you feel like is maybe a change in the game globally versus your specific return of I think it's a combination of both. The risk and reward, you could go cover a kick and sometimes you can win a five, let's say you tackle them at the 20. Well, it's a difference of five yards. Well, if you keep covering, covering kicks, sometimes you might give them an extra 10 yards. So now they get the ball to 35 and now they're only a couple of first downs away from being in field goal position. So there's just give and take the risk and reward with that you know for us on special teams and that's why i love working with coach smith we look at it as a first play on defense there's opportunities for us to create a spark for our defense by going down there forcing a big hit getting a tackle inside the 15. you know the returner might have some ball security issues there's another opportunity for us to try to get the ball out and create an extra possession for our offense especially with the parity in the league with the games are one possession games those can make a difference by us gaining an extra possession when it comes to Troy Anderson, I feel like from the outside looking in, you can see his explosiveness, particularly in punts, in punt situations. What makes him an asset on special teams for you? I think his size, his athletic ability, um, his football IQ and his football awareness. Going back to Montana State, he played multiple positions. So he has a great feel for the game, spatial awareness, how to play in space, understanding the offensive phase of the game and the defensive phase of the game. And then you add that, too, with his, his explosiveness and then, like I said before, his athletic ability. And he's a great teammate. He's very selfless when it comes to doing his job. You know, sometimes there's plays that are designed not for him to go make the tackle, but for him to take on two, one or two blocks to free up an extra guy. So you add all those variables together, and that, that shows his athletic ability and his talents on the field when it comes to him playing on special teams. Maybe an elementary question, but it's about the Let's weather. Go. I mean, <laughs> it's supposed to be pretty nasty on Thursday. I'm sure it's something that, you know, how you get guys that handle the ball consistently prepared for that. I'm sure it's not something as, it's probably more sophisticated than just dunking a ball in water, you know. So what, how do you kind of mentally get 
the, get these guys prepared for a game that may be pretty gross on, on Thursday? I think you go back to the, <clears throat> the basic fundamentals. I think sometimes when you play in adverse conditions or something that's you know not the best conditions, it goes back to pad level, footwork, your catch mechanics, your eyes, your first step, um, not false stepping. All those little things matter because when you get teams or players that play in different conditions, whether it's snow, rain, a soggy field, the, the breakdowns happen in the basic fundamentals. That's where it happens. So not being focused and being dialed in that play, looking the ball in when you're catching it, whether you're a holder or a punter, you know, making sure that you're um, taking the shorter steps when you're a punter or a kicker rather than reaching out. And then, because sometimes in this type of weather that we're in right now, you could get away with that. You can not playing underneath your framework of your body and playing outside the framework of your body. You could get away with that. But when you play in those type of conditions, you really have to hone in and rely on your basic fundamentals. Uh, it, with specifically probably with Ku and Pena specifically, how does that get stimulated? There's different things we could do with wet footballs. We could have, we can manufacture, I call it controlled adversity. I learned that kind of from Tony Dungy reading a couple of his books, creating that adversity for your players. And yes, it is hard, but it prepares them for those opportunities before it presents itself. When there's opportunities to practice out in the rain, we don't go inside to the indoor unless it's like a thunder situation or lightning. We'll stay out there and practice, and that's a great opportunity for us to work wet ball drills, whether it's catching the ball, kicking the ball, returning the ball as a returner, all those different things. And even in the return game and coverage game, us playing with proper footwork and not slipping and falling as a coverage unit. So it's not only just handles – we deal with that with the specialists, but it's for everybody on special teams, and it correlates for our offense and defense as a whole. I mean, this might be very minute, but, like, wet football is, like, you literally, like – soak them in like do you, like do you have like the equipment guys like soak them in tubs like what do you do to kind of there's create multiple ways we could soak them in tubs i've done it to where we put some dove soap on the football you know some dish soap <laughs> on them we've done it we've done all types of stuff you know you can spray the football while the snappers uh, snapping the football there's di many different ways to create that adversity but at the end of the day you got to hone in and be focused on your fundamentals when it comes to that you rub them in the football yourself or no, no. <laughs> I can. I've done it before back with the Chargers. I put some dish soap on the football. So, yeah, yeah. So it's not like the. No, you, you can use bar. You know, you got go unscented. You don't want to, you know, D leg got sensitive skin, so we'll go unscented with that. One. But that's pretty much how we handle that. So you're doing those things this week? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. You can help me with the soap and the footballs if you want to. Uh, sure. <laughs> Bye. Let's do it. The more you can do, right? Uh, more interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Appreciate you. you guys take care. Uh, yeah, Coach, um, what uh, were some of the issues? Go back and then get ready for Carolina. What were some of the issues on third down? Uh, I looked at different distances and stuff, too. For, for the last Didn't, cover Didn't cover them? What the Why? one? That was the one. <laughs> Thread throughout on third down. Well, if it's third down, they catch the ball. Does that mean we covered them? So it means we didn't cover them long enough. Well, I mean, how hard is it? That's what we did. Well, that's what I thought, but I wanted to get your um, – I didn't well, want I would to think that you could see my that. opinion. I would think you could see that on any TV, on any third down, on any game. If, the, if somebody completes a pass, that means they didn't cover them, whatever the coverage might be. That's what I would guess. See, why, I mean, kind of following on third down, why – it seems like there's been a lot of explosive plays also on third down. Did you see explosive down. plays on third down last week? Third, you did? Yeah, it was 25 yards on third down. Okay, what's an explosive play, Mike? Fine. Fine. Your standard or our standard? Fine, what's your standard? What's big plays are 20 yards, explosive plays are 30 yards. Okay, so big what did to say? Play. What did to say? What did we say last week was one of the things was the biggest nemesis that we had going in? was giving up explosive plays on third down, okay? That was the fewest big plays we've given up all season. But we're going to dwell on our third down production in that game. Second lowest quarterback rating we've given up to a hell of a quarterback, by the way. Okay, it is the best percentage they get 43 times through for 245 yards. Is that pretty good, five point some yards a catch? Is that good or is that bad? You guys tell me. I'd say that's pretty good. I'd say that's a positive. I'd say giving up the fewest big plays was a positive. 
I say starting the game three and out was a positive. Did we talk about not being able to start a game fast? We started a game fast. How did we do in the second half starting the game? Starting the second half, two, three and outs. How about when we got the sudden change on the 50 yard line and we turn the ball, they we get them to turn the ball over and we intercept. Why don't we talk a, once in a while about the positives that even come out of a loss? Instead of, we are always gonna look for the negative. Is that what we're supposed to do? Is that part of journalism? Really? I mean, I'm asking as a coach, is everything always got to be, let's find something negative to talk about, and this week it'll be third down. There are positive things that come out of a loss, and there are negative things that come out of a win. You understand that? There are. But we're going to dwell on third down. Okay? We got to do better on third down. And the simple answer is we need to play better coverage, or we need to get to them on the pressure. We hit this guy. This guy is one of the best quarterbacks we have placed all year. And he had an 80 rating. 80 rating. There's never one word ever said about that. Not one. In any article, which I don't read, but my wife happened to bring one up that somebody wrote. So we gave up 20 points. Second best. If we averaged 20 points a se during the season, what would that ra rank us? You guys know? 12. I'll tell you, because I already know. 200, 330 yards. Where would that rank us? 12th. I'll just let you know. Those are both pretty good. What I want to say is I walk into that room and I watch it and yeah, I'm disappointed in a loss and I'm disappointed sometimes in third down, but the other thing I'm going to do as a coach is I'm going to teach and I'm going to coach off the positives. And we are trending in the right direction. So last week I'm talking about giving up all these big plays and now we didn't give them up, did we? And we didn't have explosive plays. How much run after the catch did we have? The only one that we gave up that was actually to me fairly explosive, we actually missed the tackle. I thought we had an interception over the ball. We were playing zone, a new zone that we th put in. And we read it perfect, and the guy missed the tackle, both of them. They both went for the ball, and they missed them. So I come out of there feeling better about the defense after a loss than I did in some games after we win. So that's all I'm telling you. So it's the Fewest explosive plays in San Francisco, which was a win. We gave up 14 points. All I'm just saying is there's a hell of a lot of positives on a defense that's trying to trend in the right direction, and our guys are busting their ass to do it. And I'm proud as hell of them. And do we have to get better on third down? Yes. Got to get better on a lot of things. We had five three and outs. Pretty good. I've been around defense a long time. I am not disappointed in this defense. I'm very happy about this defense and where it's going. So just to make the record clear, I am not going to be negative. You can be all you want. That's, that's society. That's what today is. That's election day. I'm so sick. I'm so glad election day is over so I don't have to watch ads on somebody berating somebody else. I'd just like to have one guy stand up one time and say what he stands for and just say, this is what I'll do, and this is how I'll do it. That would be a novel idea that actually I grew up watching when I was a kid, watching. Years ago, people actually stood for something, told you what they stood for, told you how they were going to do it. Now, is I got to find every criminal record about some guy. I got to find every personal vendetta against some guy. I wouldn't want to run for office if I had to. And I'd like to. I actually would like to. Because I'd like to, I th all it takes is a little common sense. It doesn't take a whole lot of smarts. It just takes some common sense, which there's very little of anymore. So, got my. Got my juices flowing, so you guys good? Next question. <laughs> the quarterback situation in Carolina, they played two last game. Uh, you've uh, uh, probably, played two again. Pardon me? They'll probably play two again. They'll probably play two again. And then Darnold's up too. Uh, he got activated Monday. He got activated, doesn't mean he's up. We don't know if he's up. He's on the roster. He's on the roster. Right. Okay. Yep. If they're NFL quarterbacks, they're good. That's the way I look at them. I guess pros and cons of essentially playing a team 10 days apart, not just that, but a divisional opponent that you relatively know quite a bit about. Does it almost become, I mean, every game's a chess match, but for coaches, does it almost become more of a chess match considering how much familiarity you have? Well, I think it, I think it really becomes with both staffs. I think you, 
more about doing what you want to do and what you feel you believe in as your team as it is about the opposing team. As chances are you're not going to change the whole scheme in two weeks. And the other part of it is so they're familiar with us, we're familiar with them. Um, is that a good, is that a bad? You know, I, I don't know. It's like you said, Tori, there are pros and cons. Uh, I don't know. I, it's, it's more about us, and I'll bet you if you're in Carolina, they're more saying it's more about them than it is us. It's, it's here's how we got to play. Here's what we need to do. You know, same way with us. It's, it's about us. It's, it's about us. And the, the fact is there's so many things that are going on behind the scenes you guys have no idea in the structure of this defense. There's things that we have finally done after two years, made an adjustment on the sideline and went in and done it without ever practicing it once. You guys don't have anything to do about that. You don't have any idea of that. But that to me, that is now growth in this defense that I can go over in the sidelines, put something in that we haven't practiced for two weeks, ran it actually at a critical time in the game and stopped them on a third down and put it in and had not practiced it all week. Something we had done quite a while back, talked to them on the sidelines, and the guys were good enough to be able to go do that. Couldn't do that a year ago. Probably couldn't do that earlier in the season. That's growth. That's growth. And that's what this, that's what this team's about. That's what this defense is about. And I love the way they're playing hard all the way to the end. We had a chance to still win that game. Had a turnover. I feel bad for TQ. He sure didn't mean to drop the ball. It happens. It happens. He didn't lose the game. So that's certainly, if some people think he did, that's, that's a ridiculous statement. First of all, he almost won the game for us. Had he not been hustling his butt off, he wouldn't have been over there to pick up the fumble to begin with. And if Rashawn hadn't been but busting his ass, he wouldn't have been able to knock it out. How about those? That's the positive, is that they were both in a place to make a play to actually give us a chance to win a game instead of while he fumbled the ball at the end. It's a defensive lineman. Come on. Why do you, going back to um, what you just said in the middle of that last answer, you said growth. Why were you able to make that kind of on the fly in game adjustment? Is it, is it growth? Is it experience? Is it leaders stepping up? Like, why, why did you feel comfortable and why was it? Guys so understanding the defense. Guys finally understanding. There's a lot to it. We do a lot of things. And so it always, it's not one of these defenses you can walk in and we play two coverages and two fronts and everybody is easy and line up. We do a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So there's a lot of things we do one week and we may not see them again or do them again for three or four weeks. And in this particular call, I just knew something that they were kind of looking to do and the way they were kind of motioning. And so all of a sudden I went to the sidelines, talked to the linebackers, talked to the secondary, said they do this motion, we're doing this, do this. Boom, we came back and they stopped them. And so it was a matter of they now kind of understand how to do a lot of things. And so you can make a few more adjustments. Will that be the same case this week? I don't know. Every week's different. But in the past, I would have said I kind of have to live with this because I couldn't get guys to figure. I might have given up a real big play trying to adjust it, and then they screw up the adjustment. Now they didn't. So that, to me, that was such a positive coming off the field, and they felt good about themselves. Like, hey, we just took something from the sideline, put it in, went out there, and executed it. That that's, that's, says a lot about our team, about a, lot, a lot about our guys. I love these guys. I'm telling you, I, this, this team is so much fun to coach. Love it, coaching these guys. Three-ish games without A.J. Terrell and Casey Hayward. How do you kind of evaluate, you talk about growth, how do you evaluate Darren Hall, Cornell Armstrong, and kind of the growth that you've seen? Just they're filling in, they're doing the best they can. That's how I evaluate them. I really did. I really have thought about it. I really, I, w I wouldn't mind doing it, except that, you know what, I wouldn't put my family through it. Seriously. I mean, seriously. I, that's the problem. I don't want to get going. <laughs> but then, but it is, it is really the problem. It's just like, why would you want to put your family through all the negative is out there and just pull up every little thing? And it doesn't even matter if it's true. By the time you figure out and prove that it's not, you're already done. I mean, it's just, it, I just, I don't understand the world right now. And it's, that's why in some ways I'd like to fix it, <laughs> you know? But, it, it, but the problem was is to be honest and to do all that stuff, you ain't gonna get elected. So, yeah. What would you have wanted everyone to run for? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how much thought you gave it. I, mean, <laughs> I haven't given much thought. I'm just saying I would, I would, uh, politics. 
It's not politics to me. It's just actually wanting to do something for society that's right and good. And it really doesn't matter if it's Republican or Democrat. I might run as a Whig. <laughs> <laughs> you, some of you guys don't even know what that is. So you're too, you're too damn young. So you guys good? Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah, Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, how much, we, we talked a little bit with Coach on, uh, you know, short week, preparing for the same, uh, you know, team. Yeah. Uh, you know, what worked last game? You think, you know, how much do you adjust or adapt? Uh, you know, for you know, Marcus had his hottest passing game that game. Sure, ran the ball pretty good that game. Yeah, I think anytime you play in a division opponent, let alone one uh, within a couple weeks, um, the familiarity is there. Uh, the reality, though, is for both of us, uh, each week you can you come to a different spot in terms of who's up, injuries, things of that nature, what's working, what's not, what you have to adjust. I mean, we're under. Uh, no ill-conceived notions they're not going to have adjustments, just like that we're going to have adjustments, and then we're going to have to make those adjustments as the game goes on as well. Um, again, they present a lot of issues, uh, what they do defensively with their pressures and their, and their personnel. Uh, we obviously are very aware of who they have and how they can use them, and so it's going to be our job offensively to make sure that we stay one step ahead and continue to, like I said, make adjustments as the game goes on. Mentioned the one thing stuck with me was the speed and the space of the defense and their ability to play in space. Yeah, right. I mean, you look around, just each level of the defense um, has really, really good football players, uh, guys that perform at a high level, and they make the guys around them better. That's, that's the one thing when you look at really good defenses and you look at good defensive players and you look at how they're able to make the guy next to them better. And this defense is chock full of them. Uh, they've got great experience, young, old, guys who played, um, guys who are breaking themselves in, and they play fast. And we know it's going to be a physical football game. And uh, Jared Brown, how do you all try to uh, keep him under control? I think he had double-digit tackles. Yeah, I don't think anybody's game. keeping him under control right now. I mean, we have our work cut out for us. He's a very good football player. But, again, it's one of – you look at each part of that defense, and he's, he's one of 11, depending on what personnel is in, um, that can give us issues. And obviously, it's our job to go out there and make sure we can go out there and execute. Following up on Dela's second question about closing in space and, and doing so quickly, when a defense does that the way that Carolina did 10 days ago, what does that emphasize for ball carriers, pass catchers? For yeah, sure. Guys? Yeah, I mean, they're, they do a great job of swarming the football. Uh, they're always around it, um, regardless if you're through the air or on the ground. And for us, it's, it's our mentality, too, to finish. So us – on the offense, having guys around the football. So again, it's, uh, it's going to be one of those similar battles that we've had throughout the last two years with this you know, same defensive personnel. Uh, don't expect anything different uh, Thursday night. How much, the way you guys use CP on Sunday, how much of that was because he's still kind of ramping up after the injury versus maybe how you're envisioning this offense? Yeah, no, I think when it comes from the personnel standpoint, regardless if it's CP or not CP, it's a, about making sure that we're using guys, keeping guys fresh, giving guys the opportunity to be successful. Um, it's not, hey, he's got to have this or this, regardless of who it is. Um, and again, when a guy comes off a certain amount of time, right, he's working his way back in, we're working our way back in. and. Again, no different than if it was an offensive lineman coming in, you know, making sure that he gets adjusted. And so for us, you know, the usage and everything else is usually determined how the game goes. Uh, you mentioned the offensive line at left guard. This will be another new, you know, three weeks with three different starters now. What is it that Colby maybe brings? Or, and what was it that yeah. maybe Matt brought last week to start him over Colby? Yeah, well, with Matt, first and foremost, regardless of how it, who ended up being the starter, um, I think each guy came in with the, with the preparation to be ready, and that, it showed, right? Unfortunately, something happened to Matt, um, and then Gossett was able to go in there, step in, and, um, and perform. So regardless of how that all worked out, what I do appreciate on this offense and this team is the professionalism of each guy, and it showed. You, again, you never know when your number's going to be called, um, and he was able to step up in that regard. Uh, Matt was a, who came in, gave us you know, experience, played in, interior, Played the center spot, smart, good energy, right? And we expect the same thing for, um, for Gossett um, and, or anybody else who has to play for us um, at the offensive line position. So, again, it's more about the style of play that which we go about and appreciate how they attack and prepare for their job. 
the run game maybe has been successful. It seems like no matter who's in there running back, no matter who's in there, if you have to change up on the offensive line, like you're right there, or why has this worked kind of no matter what? Well, I think from a from a standpoint of the run game, it's it goes back to the the mentality and the style in which you want to play. Um, you know, obviously we have the ability um, through certain formations, personnel, and different things to try to create advantages. But really, it's those guys coming out um, playing extremely fast, and that's just not the offensive line. Sometimes that gets like we've talked about in the past, even last year, right? Things get pointed to the offensive line on certain things, but the reality is. The receivers have done a phenomenal job. The running backs of tracks have gotten really, really good. The quarterback's making sure that he's getting against the right play if he's not the ball carrier. And you got the tight ends who are, you know, regardless of what their stat line might look like in the pass catching, like they're going out and they're playing fast. And so when you run the ball well, it's not just the offensive line, it's everybody. And the offensive line obviously sets the tone, uh, but the rest of those guys come out with an intent and a style of play in which we appreciate and we obviously preach. And we hope for that to continue. One thing for the running back, I know he's at, midway, at the midway point of the season, is really close to his career highs with the yards and carries. Was that when you got signed him, the thought that he might be more of a runner than he was at Tennessee? Sure, that's a good question. I just think for us, it's always evolving. So when you look at what we're trying to put together offensively, each week might present a different thing for us because uh, of the challenges the defense has. But in terms of expectations or any of that no I don't think it was looked at that way I think it was more about okay how do we continue to evolve this offense to make us hard to defend um, some weeks some drives were better than others and we learn from the ones that we don't um, but again that's more about an evolution of where the offense is going where do you feel like the offense is going? well we need to continue to, to put good drives together we need to score in the red zone touchdowns um, if you look you know especially last week two for four um, that's not good enough um, and we need to be able to do and consistently do is stay on the field. And you can see when we obviously the drives that work for us, uh, we're on the field, we convert third downs, and we score in the red area. It's the same story regardless of who, what coordinator is sitting up here offensively in National Football League. He'll tell you it's situational football. Um, it's the ability to score um, and score touchdowns. And so that, that's really what it is for us. There's drives in which we do that, and we have a success rate that's high, and there's times where – if it's coaching by design or the fundamentals or whatever that variable is that doesn't allow us to succeed, there's something there that we obviously need to make consistent. And that's really the goal moving forward here for the, for the rest of the regular season is be consistent in the fundamentals um, and, uh, and finish drives. In light of a kind of crummy forecast uh, with the diverse running attack you guys have, do you feel like your offense can be more weatherproof than maybe a team that likes to throw it 35 times a game? Yeah, I never thought of it that way. Um, not sure of the forecast, but I, you're Dr. Doom right now on this board. No, I'm just I, – I, great. Let's bring Dean back in here for this. Um, no, uh, for us, it came from a place previous to here that the weather wasn't great. Um, never really – especially when it came to the quarterback, didn't talk much about it. I think every quarterback, when they get to this level, more than likely, especially their experience, they played in all conditions. Um, so for us, the conditions, you know, unless it's just something horrific, as you're pointing out, um, I think we'll, you know, we'll adjust accordingly, but there's nothing in terms of that. You obviously have a vision for every player that you draft, but to see where Tyler Algier is 10 weeks into his rookie year, is there ever kind of an intrigue into how he got to that point so quickly? And, and outside of the obvious CP and Damien going on IR, what has allowed Tyler to, to evolve so quickly? Well, I think anytime, it's a good question, anytime for young players, it's just about the act of doing, right? Their experience. And so, no different than Caleb Huntley. Um, other guys on the offense that have a chance to go out there and, and practice. And then once they practice, be able to do that in the game and then learn from their either successes or the things that didn't work well for him. And there's no better teacher. So every time he gets a chance or any of our young players get a chance to go out there and repeat or do something for the first time, they're going to learn from it. And again, I always think in the NFL, the guys who can learn the fastest and take advantage of their opportunities the quickest usually last in this league. You don't typically get a lot of opportunities to show what you can do. And the reality is the guys who are able to do that sooner usually have careers. The guys that just can't get it, well, they're like me. They're standing in front of you coaching instead of playing. So.
don't take that shot at me anymore. I saw the eyes on that too. Going right. back to the left guard conversation really quickly, how, when you look at what Dwayne Ledford has been able to do with this group, what do you see kind of from your vantage point of how he works the group to where there is consistency even in the fluctuating nature of the last sure. Yeah, and Les done a phenomenal job, as well as uh, Mario and Flats is, uh, that work with him. And to me, it's about the culture set in each room, each position coach. That's what I love about here. Each position coach has that ability to, to set their tone in their room. Um, and Led is no different, and you can see it if you just watch some of his individual. He's got his own passion about the position in which, you know, it's contagious, and you can feel the guys really buy into what he's selling. Um, and he's done a, ph a phenomenal job of getting anybody ready to play, and he's got a real belief in each of his players, which as a position coach, when a player knows you believe in them as that position coach, they usually go the extra mile for you. I know it sounds like a simple thing, but it's typically hard to achieve just because of players bounce around a lot in this league, but uh, the genuineness definitely sticks out. Anything else? Yeah, one. one. Um, the, um, yeah, the big passing game against Carolina, then a, a little bit uh, lower this week. How do you try to get that uh, consistent production out of the passing game? Uh, for Mark? Yeah, for us, it's one of those things where you, you go in, you try to take advantage of certain situations. Um, again, it go, I always felt this, regardless if I was on a team that threw it 45 times or didn't, uh, the passing, right, the old adage is there's a few things that can go wrong when you drop back. There's only really one that goes right, right? Especially when I worked for a defensive head coach multiple times, I've heard that. But my point in all that is it does take, just like the run game, it does take all 11 in the pass game. And so we're trying to strive for that consistency, uh, the timing, the spacing, the trust of all that. So we'll continue to press that as the weeks go on and, um, and hope for consistent results as we move forward. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. All right, man. All right, guys.